for this tutorial, we're going to look at some ways to factor a uh, polynomial down into simpler uh, quadratic or linear uh, expressions or factors. Um, in this case, we have k of x equals x to the fifth plus x to the fourth minus 13x cubed minus 23x squared minus 14x minus 24. So when they say uh, the product of linear, we know that that is x to the first power and quadratic is x to the squared power. So we want to get rid of anything that is above those two powers. So what we're first going to want to do is use one of the methods we've learned so far to find the zeros of this, uh, this function. And um, what we can first do is use our law of signs to take a look here. And you notice that um, there are one uh, and just only one sign change for k of x. So that means we have only one uh, positive zero for sure. So taking a look at the graph of this function, we can be almost certain that that positive zero occurs at x equals four here on the graph. So what we can then do uh, is use a synthetic division to make sure that we get a remainder of zero when we put this function in. So I'm gonna write it out. I'm gonna put four up in my box here. And I'm going to get 1, 1, negative 13, negative 23, negative 14, and negative 24. So when I divide this out, I get 4, add them, I get 5. 4 times 5 is 20, add them, I get 7. Here I get 28, 5, I get 20, and 6. I get positive 24, which does in fact give me a remainder of 0. So I can be sure that x is equals 4 is a 0 of this function. So going down a little bit, um, I can also sort of guess. I could have done the sign changes for the negative zeros, but since I have the graph here, I might as well just try out some more. Um, it looks like a 0 occurs at negative 2, so let's verify that. And what we can actually do is uh, we can use this function that um, what we would call the press function, the function that we just obtained. And we can actually just divide that one by our supposed zero, which looks to be around negative two. So I'll do the same thing. And when I bring the one down, get negative two. 3, negative 6, 1, negative 2, 3, negative 6, and I also get 0. So I can be sure that this, uh, this graph has a 0 at negative 2 as well. And finally, since it appears this graph has a 0 over here at negative 3, let's try that just to make sure. Um, bring down the 1. We get negative 3, we get 0. Negative 3 times 0 is 0, plus 1. We get negative 3, and I do get 0. So I've essentially found uh, all the zeros of this function because, um, and you could, have, uh, you could have bounded it to make sure that all the zeros lie within that region. Um, you also could have, like I said, used the sign changes of k of negative x to figure out that there were two possible uh, negative zeros for the function. Um, but we just kind of looked at the graph to figure all that out and verified it using synthetic division. So this last function I'm left with, uh, since we started with x to the fifth, this became x to the uh, fourth, and then this became x cubed, and finally we're left with x squared plus 0x plus 1. And like I said, we wanted to get our factors down to the quadratic form. So this is definitely acceptable for one of our factors, uh, x squared plus 1. And that's something that we can't really factor down into real numbers. 
uh, in the next example, we'll be uh, taking that down into imaginary numbers, but here we can't take it to real numbers. Um, so the next thing we want to do is look at our zeros, and we know that uh, k of x has a zero at 4, so one of its factors can be x minus 4. One of its factors can be x minus negative 2, which would be x plus 2. And one of its factors could be x minus negative 3, which would be x plus 3. And like I said, this last factor of x squared plus 1. So for part A here, this is all they want. This is good for a final answer because it's limited down to linear and a quadratic uh, form. Now in the next uh, part B, we're going to look at uh, taking this even further and breaking it down into imaginary factors. Notice that part B asks us to only write the product, or k of x as the product of linear factors. So we know from earlier, and I'll just uh, pull that up real quick, that k of x can be factored down into uh, x minus 4, x plus 2, uh, x plus 3, and x squared plus 1. And we have no issue with the first three factors because they're all linear. The only factor we take issue with is x squared plus 1 since it's in the quadratic form. So what we can do is we can rethink of this as a difference of squares. You might not see it there, but if you take this as x squared minus negative 1, now we have a difference of squares where you would basically have um, something like this. You have x plus uh, the square root of negative 1 and x minus the square root of negative 1. And we know that in imaginary numbers, the square root of negative 1 is i. So let's just put out all of our factors. And notice that now our entire thing is in uh, linear form rather than linear and quadratic. So on these problems when you're doing part b this is what it's looking for it wants you to take the imaginary numbers and make sure that all your x's are to the first power so finally what part c is going to ask in these problems is to have you list all of the zeros of k of x and here we know that k of x equals these factors so i'm not going to rewrite it out but we can understand that x minus 4 could be 0. So one of the zeros of x could be 4. Um, one of them could be negative 2. One could be negative 3. And then we could have one at negative i and a 0 at i. So these are all of the possible zeros based on what I factored in that part b with the uh, linear factors. So here's an example for you to try. Um, see if you can write k of x as the product of only linear factors.